So in today's session, we are going to be looking at the data presentation and analysis section. Now, out of all of the eight steps I'm going through in this series, this step, step five, is worth 20 out of the 60 marks that you get for your project. So it's super important to get this bit right. What you need for this is at least three methods of data presentation, and I will come and talk about that a little bit more in a minute. You need to try and get some stats in there. Now, the stats will push your grade up. So if you're aiming for the higher grades, you definitely need some sort of statistical analysis in there. And you need to link your work back to theory. So whatever findings you find, you need to be able to show that they either agree or disagree, support or don't support the uh, literature that you found in your literature review. So let's start with the methods of presentation. I'm just going to get a few examples from previous coursework on the screen to show you. OK, so what I've done here is I've cut and pasted previous students' work. OK, so the one on the top left is a student that was working out access to green space. And what they did is they put a grid over a map and they tried to work out the percentage of the area that was taken up with green spaces and they've compared two different places. Now, you'll see from this, there's some rough workings out on the bottom. That doesn't matter. I quite like that in a way because it showed the student had actually worked it out themselves rather than got something to work it out for them. And then underneath, really importantly, they have referred to it. So they've said where figure 15 is, they've given the percentage of green space, they've said where figure 16 is, and they've started to talk about them. Now, I've not given you the whole of their explanation here, that's just the start. But the point is about this section, you present your data and then you explain it. On the right, we've got two other examples of uh, types of data presentation, but without the explanations this time. The, the top right is a word cloud, and this is a really good thing to do if you've done a questionnaire. It takes qualitative data and it presents it really nicely. There's loads of websites you can get that will create word clouds for you. And you can see it's quite effective. You can see quite clearly what people are saying. The bigger the image or the bigger the words, the more people have said that. Bottom right, really straightforward bar chart. And bar charts can be hand-drawn, they can be done on a computer. I think they're probably better done on a computer because at least you're gonna have straight lines, you're not gonna lose anything. But it needs to have axes labels. And with this one, um, I would say that there is um, a missing axes label there. We needed a Y axis. So that is something that you've got to be careful of. Let's look at some more. Right, the one on the left here is a box plot. And this is looking at average house prices. And again, we've got some nice explanation underneath that tells you about the um, averages for these. Now, this counts as um, quite sophisticated data analysis because it's using some stats here. We're looking at quartile ranges and it's really nicely presented. It's got lots of labels. It's got figure number and it's discussed in quite a bit of detail underneath. The one on the right is um, looking at radar graphs or radial diagrams. Again, you can make these in Excel. I'm going to show you how to make graphs in a second. But we have got the two sites side by side. And we can see that within those sites, we've got different streets and how those streets score. Really effective because you can immediately see which of the two sites scores the highest. Um, and again, it's explained underneath. And look at the level of detail that they're explaining it in. They're referring to figure numbers. They're referring to numbers. Really good level of detail. And the last ones, um, annotated photos are great. I would say that the arrows on this annotated photo perhaps need to point a little bit more clearly to what they're talking about. Really good annotated photos, the photos will point at the exact thing that you want to speak about. And then on the right hand side, you know, don't be afraid to use really traditional graphs like the bar chart we saw on the previous slide or even a um, pie chart like this one. And again, this pie chart, while it's been great, it needs some explanation, it needs a figure number. We need to know what the actual title is. But age is a little bit, um, it's a little bit wishy-washy. I don't know what it's referring to. Perhaps in the context of the whole NEA, it would make a little bit more sense. I'm just going to show you now how to make some graphs in Excel. OK, so if we have a look on the screen, I've got some data on there. I'm just going to put my glasses on for this bit so I can see a little bit better. So here we've got some standard data that you might collect. So we've got some age ranges down the left and we've got the number of times that each of these age ranges visited the park per month. Now in Excel, if you highlight the data and then you go into insert and recommended charts, it will recommend some graphs for you. Now, you've got to be careful about this. This graph to me seems perfectly sensible. This one is showing the percentages that is not as easy to read. Percentages that 
whilst it doesn't, it's not terrible with this, it's not the most obvious thing to use really. I think something like a bar chart might be quite good. And then when you click on OK, it will give you this, but it's not giving you any axis labels at all. So what you need to do is you need to click on the plus and put axis titles, and you need to type in what the titles are. So across the bottom, for example, we could put in here age ranges. And then up the side, we've put number of times visiting the park. Um, if you want to do a graph that's slightly more complex, let's look at those radar graphs. So here's some more data here. So this data is looking at four different streets within a town, and it's given some um, ratings for litter, noise, graffiti, and visible property damage. So one is a good score, and five is if something is particularly bad. Again, if I just highlight that data, and I go into insert recommended charts. Now, I don't like any of these charts particularly. I don't think any of them are really showing what I want to show. So if I go into all charts, I can then start to choose my own. So those radar graphs that we saw seem to work really well. So if I click on radar, it will give me some examples of what these radar graphs might look like. That one looks great. So we'll click OK. And again, you can see here that we need a chart title. There are little bits that we need to fill in. Um, but that's how you get you know, just then copy and paste that into your document. So that's how you make graphs. And there are lots of different things that you can do with the colours and the design. Um, I would say if you're making radar graphs for more than one place, really good practice would be to try and if, for example, instead of doing streets, you were doing, um, I don't know, a, a, a count of wildlife, you might have the different colours the same throughout. So if birds was blue in this one, then birds would be blue on the next street. Just think about it, I think is what I'm saying. So you need at least three methods of presentation, and they could be maps, they could be um, graphs, they could be different types of graph, they could be annotated photos. Some stats would be good in there. If you're not sure about stats, there's some guides on my website, so geographygeek.co.uk forward slash other stuff. There are some stats in there about uh, spearmint rank, how to do one, what, what a table would look like to make a spearmint rank, and also for chi-squared. So do visit my website if you need more support. And then the links back to theory. OK, so if you said in your introduction that uh, a researcher had been out and they had found that um, town centres were the noisiest parts and a little bit further out from the town centre was less noisy, you could then say whether or not you agree with it based on the data that we've just graphed, because you would know where those streets were. And if the streets in your town centre were the noisiest, then you would say that you would agree with that. And if they weren't, you would say that you found the opposite to that. And it doesn't matter if you find the opposite. What matters is that you've managed to link it back and you've managed to give your opinion. So that's all I'm going to say about the data presentation and analysis section. Just remember, 20 out of 60 marks this is really worth spending a good deal of time on.